Also, there's this. A member of a Boston suburbs human rights commission resigned after posting in a profanity-laden post to Facebook last week that mocked God and cursed her fellow citizens amid controversy regarding a local library's Christmas trees. So the town of Dedham, um, Massachusetts, about 30 miles southwest of Boston, drew national attention after Lisa Desmond, the manager of the local uh, Endicott Branch Library, wrote on Facebook earlier this month that its annual Christmas tree display had apparently been canceled to prevent offending people. Desmond wrote, I've never posted a negative post on Facebook. That is until now. I found out today that my beautiful library will not have its Christmas tree this year. When I asked, I was told that people were made uncomfortable last year looking at it. I'm sorry, what? In my 28 years of, uh, at the library, I have never heard a negative comment. Uh, yeah, because it was probably just one person. I mean, how can you, I, I don't care what your religion is or if you don't have a religion, it doesn't even seem physically possible to uh, conjure feelings of anger or revulsion when you're looking at a Christmas tree. It's just, a, it's a naturally joyous, like, doesn't it make anyone smile to see a Christmas tree? It could even make me smile. So I, how could you manage to actually be upset, stewing in anger, looking at a Christmas tree, of all things? Well, most people can, but it's probably one person. So for 28 years, they had a, a Christmas tree, no problems. No one ever expressed one single um, ounce of, of anger about it. One person comes along after almost three decades and says, you know, I really don't like that. Okay, well, yes, sir, we'll take it right down. Desmond noted that the town historically has celebrated and included everyone in our community, and she happily participated in a recent Juneteenth celebration at the library last summer. Uh, Diane Loud, who was appointed to the Human Rights Commission in Massachusetts by the town's uh, Commission on Disability, reportedly called Desmond a selfish effing bee in a subsequent Facebook post that accused her of endangering lives by raising the issue. She wrote, for a tree, for a mother effing tree, you've put people's lives in a lot of danger, a lot of danger. So a Christmas tree puts people's lives in danger. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe if the tree falls over on you or if, it, if it's a real tree and you're not watering it enough and it could become a fire hazard. I mean, that's real. So is that what she means? I don't think so. Addressing others, uh, she speculated, might also have been responsible for bringing the controversy to wider attention. Loud continued in part, I hope you know the fact that you, who claim to believe in Christ and Christmas or whatever happy horse S, you're trying to hide behind are the least gracious, most hateful, most disgusting trash in the world. Is this what you think your magic sky daddy wants? Where in the Bible was this again? In closing, I would like to add an F you, you pieces of trash. I hate each and every one of you, and I do wish great suffering on you. You're terrible, terrible people. You did it all because you didn't get your way. You're despicable. This is about a Christmas tree. I always thought the, the story of like the Grinch who stole Christmas was, was you know, uh, it's a little hard to get invested in because it's just not very realistic. Like, how could anyone hate Christmas that much? But here, here, here we go. This is the person that the story was based on, I guess. Um, and uh, it says, Loud participated earlier this year in an LGBT pride event hosted by the town of Dedham and its uh, HRC Human Rights Commission, where she was joined by her, by her grown child, Max, who discovered his transgender identity at the age of 13. All right, big surprise there. So... <laughs> So Diane Loud, with a, with a very appropriate last name, I must say, sounds like a just a deeply miserable person, a, a horrendously unpleasant human being all around. No wonder she has a trans kid. She's exactly the kind of adult, exactly the kind of especially over-domineering, uh, left-wing, mentally unstable mother who ends up having a trans child just by coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence because she imposes that identity on her child. Um, no surprise there. But I really want to focus on the fact that she's an anti-Christian atheist with the Human Rights Commission, or she was with the Human Rights Commission. And this is, this is a, a problem that goes far beyond just this one individual. So it's a, it's a bigger issue. Um, and I'm sure this never occurred to her because she doesn't seem like the sort of person who makes a habit of, you know, thinking, much less thinking self-critically. But you cannot be involved in protecting or preserving human rights as an anti-Christian atheist. It doesn't really make any sense. It doesn't. 
And as I said, this is a problem that goes far beyond uh, Mrs. Loud. I'm going to assume Miss Loud because I'm going to assume she's not married. Um, it goes far beyond that. It's like if you're an, if you're an atheist, if you're a secular leftist, and you go around talking about human rights all the time, you've got a real issue here because what do you think? Like, what is a woman? Well, what is a what is a human right? Well, what do you think a human right even is? Where do you think it comes from? What, what are you talking about? But now, the people who came up with the concept, the concept as we understand it today, and if you want to, you, you know, if you want to trace back the uh, the lineage of this thought process that that led to the formulation of modern human rights as we understand it, you, know, you can decide how far back you want to go. But the people who came up with the concept as we understand it today, who formulated sort of the modern understanding of human rights, these were Christians. And it's very much grounded in a Christian worldview of natural law. Um, of human beings created by God, endowed by by certain rights, because of which is which is which which we we have as uh, you know, thanks to our inherent dignity, and all of this is rooted in the fact that we are created by this transcendent being. That there is something beyond the physical. Um, that we are not merely subject to and products of. Darwinian evolution. There's something beyond that. That's human rights, as it's always been understood. But if you don't believe any of that, and if you think, as Diane Loud does, that all that is a bunch of happy horse s, then how, how do you how do you hang on to the human rights? What do you think that's grounded in? A human right must either come from, if it means anything at all, it either comes from God. Or it, it comes from man. It comes from the government. So either this is a human right is something that's ingrained that we just that we possess, whether it's recognized by the government or not. It's just we still possess it by our very nature. So it's either that, or it's simply words that we write on a piece of paper. You know, governments decide what your rights are. You have the right to do this because the government said you do. And if they say you don't, then you don't anymore. But nobody wants to understand human rights that way. They certainly don't on the left. You know, when the Supreme Court made the decision about Roe v. Wade, we were told that by the left, including many of them secular atheists, they, they, they said, well, no, this is a, this, it doesn't matter what the Supreme Court says. Women have the right to abortion. Well, what do you mean right? Who says who? What are you appealing to exactly when you, when you talk about this mystical right that, that exists? You're not appealing to God. What are you appealing to? If you can only appeal to man, if you can only appeal to the government, then it's up to them what the rights are. And it doesn't make any sense. If the government says you have a right to this, it doesn't make any sense to say, no, that's, that's not true. What do you mean it's not true? According to you, a right by definition is simply whatever the government says. This is a real problem that I don't think anyone on the left has even attempted, or very few people on the left have even attempted to confront or deal with or wrestle with. Um, and it just makes everything they say about human rights totally meaningless. And that'll do it for this portion of the show as we move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.